Oh, I just deleted my replica set instead. Hey, <laughs> so if I, if I go... Hello there and welcome to day 8 of 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where I am to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. Today I'm going to be looking at replica sets, specifically how you can set them up in your cluster, what they are, how they interact with pods and so on. For those who are new on my channel, welcome, it's great to have you here. This is the channel where I basically share my entire learning journey across the DevOps space with you. I also have a DevOps related newsletter where I share weekly free DevOps related content. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, sign up below. Let's get started. Remember how we used to have in the previous videos our cluster? This is our Kubernetes cluster. In our cluster we have our main node and then we have our worker nodes. So we're just gonna draw two worker nodes now and our main node. And the main node is basically responsible for any of our interactions with kubectl. And uh, then it will communicate with the Kubernetes cluster and the other resources within our cluster what has to happen, what they have to be doing. So uh, now when we want to run a container within our cluster as a pod or create a pod that is an instance of the processes within our container, um, we basically tell Kubernetes, hey, please spin up this one pod. Now, what happens is if we want to scale our application, we will need multiple pods. So for instance, two pods in that one node or um, multiple pods and multiple nodes to be on the safe side. Anyway, so we could go ahead and just create a new pod whenever we need to create a new pod, but that would be quite... Um, well, first of all, would be an imperative way of communicating with our Kubernetes cluster. And we want to have a declarative way. Watch the previous videos if you don't remember that. <laughs> and second of all, if we just spin up one pod at a time, every time that we need a new pod, we would have to find ways that they can communicate and make sure that they are really exactly running the same application, that they are just exact um, instances of each other in some way. So what we want to do instead, we want to create a replica set. And with a replica set, oops, <laughs> with a replica set, we basically tell our Kubernetes cluster, hey, we have application A and we want to have two pods running off that application at any point in time. And then we're going to go ahead, give that resource specification to our Kubernetes cluster. And the replica set is going to make sure that those pods are running at any point in time. So let's say we kill one of the pods or one of the pods dies because of whatever reason. Then the replica set will consistently basically monitor the current state of the cluster compared to our desired state, which in that case is two pods. We want to have two pods running and going to make sure to spin up a new pod. So we always have one and two pods running off that application like specified. At the same time, imagine we spin up another replication of our application. So, oops, now we have three, <laughs> three pods that are the same application while our replica set knows that we only want two actually. So what our replica set is going to do, it's going to go ahead and just kill off our third pod. It's going to be like, eh, eh, you told me two. You can't just create a new pod without telling me about it. So we will have to communicate the instances, the number of replications of our pod needed through our replica set. So as long as we have enough CPU and memory available within our, within our node, oops, within our node, then it will always try to, to meet the definition within the replica set. So we can basically say that our cluster is self-healing. So whenever something happens, the replica set is going to make sure that the cluster, and the nodes within and the pods recover from what has happened. And that means that it's self-healing. Now let's look at the YAML and see how, that, how that's defined. We want to be CDing, CDing, I don't know if that's a word, into the application that we got from this book. So we just did that, we own a master branch. You can look 
below. There's there's a link to the public notion page with my notes and there's also the script how you can clone this exact repository and follow along what I'm doing now. So now we want to look at this pot definition. Okay. So let's look at this image. First, we have our API version, our kind, like we looked at in one of the previous on the pods, the video. Then we have our metadata again with the name of this pod uh, or the, of this resource. Then we have our replica set. In this case, we have we want to have two replicas. And then we have our selectors. And in this case, selectors are really important because they have to match between the replica set and the pods. So, but through the selectors, the replica set basically knows which pods it has to manage. So this is basically the key and then the value. So in this case, I could have, for example, several different pods that are all labeled as backend. And because they are all labeled as backend, that makes them accessible as like one part, as like one backend kind of unit thing. Now let's create this resource. Go ahead and created with this command. Let's see what happens. It got created. So let's see kubectl get pods. And as you can see here, we now have our replica set. If you want to check the replica sets that you have currently available, you can also do it with kubectl get replica sets. And then you see here the the name of the replica set. Then the desired is how many replicas you want to have of this one, of this resource, of this pod. Um, the desired is two. Then the current, how many do we have? Also two. Ready, which ones are spin up, which pods of the replica set that are within or part of the replica set are actually spun up and ready to go. Also two. So let's check that that's actually the case. Get pods. And as you can see now, both of those pods are running. So two of two are ready as here described here. In this case, they were not ready yet when it was, it was not, it didn't start yet. It was not, it was con container creation, but now they are running. So they are ready to go. And this is our replica set. Now let's look at self-healing of pods and <laughs> basically this is the part that every human being wants to have. So let's just delete one of those pods. Oh, I just deleted my replica set instead. So if I, if I go and um, cube cuddle get and then I look for replica sets, I don't have any replica sets available. So let's let's create. Don't do this. Let's or, well, you can do this. Let's recreate our replica set. Let's go back and recreate it. Now it's created again. Now we check. Okay, it's there. So let's check our pods. Okay, they're running. And since the pods, they had the same selectors, the same labels as we specified in our um, replica set definition. So the replica set will always be able to find those pods if they fit its selectors, its labels, which is really nice. It's really handy. But we actually wanted to delete a pod. I guess I can just do that by kubectl get pods and then um, we're just gonna delete. And something else you want to notice, <laughs> something else you want to notice is kubectl uh, cuddle get replica sets. See here, the replica set has this format go demo2 and our pods have the same naming convention go demo2. And then some random string, I assume it's random, uh, attached at the end. So you can easily know which replica set belong to which parts. But now we want to actually delete one of the parts. So let's say, let's say this part and we just delete it. We go kapoof. <laughs> and wait, let's, let's wait until it's deleted. Anyway, now let's get the parts. And as you can see, those pods are running. Oh, now what do we have here? Well, we can't see much from these lines. I like that the pod is new or newer than the other one. But here, if you look at the age, the 
first one that we created is five minutes old by now and the other one is 66 seconds. Also, if you compare the name of our old pod that we then deleted, right, we deleted it here, and then we recreated a new one, uh, it was automatically created from our replica set, um, is now visible here. So that tells us, for instance, that a new replica, like a new part of the, from the replica set was created and is now running. So we just witnessed life healing. Beautiful. <laughs> now this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, make sure to give it a thumbs up and you might like future videos. So make sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you made it this far of the video, it means you must be serious about learning Kubernetes and DevOps. So join our DevOps learning group. Just by messaging me on Twitter and I can add you, just making sure that people, people are serious about it. Anyway, so uh, I really hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day or evening, depending where you're at. Bye-bye.